I'm Jared, and welcome to Level With Us, the show where we have a cozy video game discussion every week. Although this week, I guess it should be Level With Me, uh, because I'm flying solo. Marcus is out and abroad, and so while he is enjoying seaweed-flavored Pringles and uh, enjoying the Korean humidity, I am here to talk about a demo that I played that was given to us by Conrad from Conradical Games called The Outbound Ghost. So special thanks to Conrad for giving us the uh, press code to check the game out. Um, Now, right off the bat, I want to say that this is an earlier build of the game. Uh, I played it on my Steam Deck, and uh, this game clearly was not optimized for the Steam Deck as of yet, which makes sense. It's still being developed. So um, just keep that in mind that as I give my first impressions, uh, the game wasn't completely optimized. There was some some weird graphical glitches here and there, but I still feel like I got a pretty good feel of what the game is like. So let's just dive into it. So The Outbound Ghost is an RPG that is coming later this year. It's gonna be on Steam and Switch and other platforms as well. Um, and it's about a ghost who enters the land of Outbound, which is kind of a place between life and death, but uh, this ghost has amnesia and doesn't know uh, who they are. Um, And you play as this ghost and you have to find out more about yourself and uh, fight your demons, your inner demons, in order to ascend to the afterlife. And you meet other characters too who are also ghosts who have their own little struggles and trials um, that they need to overcome. Uh, it's, a, it's a fine premise with a very cute aesthetic. And uh, right off the bat, what got me the most interested in this game was that uh, it looks a little bit like Paper Mario. All of the characters are 2D and kind of look like little pieces of paper with hard outlines, which is something that I love, of course, as a <laughs> Paper Mario stan. So uh, that's what interested me the most, was to see kind of what this game was inspired by Paper Mario besides the aesthetic. And I would say there are quite a few little inspirations in here. Um, The characters, you know, your party of characters kind of feels similar. Um, You have these things called aspects, which I'll talk about in a minute, which kind of remind me of badges. And then there's kind of a a pseudo action command when you're doing the turn-based combat. And then uh, there's a lot of exploration in between fights. And I think that part kind of made me think of Paper Mario the most. Going through the environment and exploring and finding little hidden nooks and crannies with collectibles in them, that felt the most like Paper Mario to me. And I promise I won't compare the game to Paper Mario this whole podcast, but I thought it was worth bringing up because those are the things that appeal to me personally. Um, I thought the exploration was great. Uh, It's fun to just, you know, be rewarded for going behind a waterfall Um, The environments are really pretty, they're really fun to run around, and uh, there's also kind of a stealth element where you can hide in bushes from enemies, which is kind of cool. I'm curious if they're going to take that any further where you get a buff for sneaking up on enemies. And then as far as the aspects go, you get crafting materials throughout the world, like apples and uh, other, other materials, and you can go to a workbench or an anvil or whatever it is and craft basically a little badge called an aspect that you can give to your characters in your party. You can have up to three equipped on each character and it affects your stats in battle. So it might be something as simple as boost your attack power by 10% or it could be like reduce your HP by this much but give you a buff in this particular thing. It gives you more SP uh, or your healing specifically is buffed. Um, It's mostly like buffs and What's kind of interesting is that these there's really no limit to besides the fact that you can only equip three. So if you want, you can just go all out and equip three power focused aspects and then just have one of your characters be a heavy damage dealer. And I think the game kind of encourages that. I think throughout the combat, I was kind of surprised at how you can make the characters kind of as powerful as you want um, and Some of them are more geared towards healing or more geared towards uh, defense. Um, So that kind of can influence what aspects you apply to them. But um, I thought that was cool. I've never really done many RPGs that have crafting in them. I'm sure there's many, but uh, this is the first time I've seen something like that. And it was, you know, something again that just rewarded me for exploring and um, going to every 
you know, dead end in every part of the environment to try and collect everything. So really liked that. Uh, the battle system itself, um, this is more of a classic RPG where you have four party characters uh, or eventually you get up to four. And, uh, you know, I have to say right up front, I don't usually like turn-based RPGs. I, I tried Octopath Traveler wasn't for me and the same goes for like the original final fantasy games uh, i don't know what it is maybe it's the the big numbers or the um just kind of that repeated cycle of just hitting attack or maybe it's the grinding i'm not sure it just doesn't appeal to me unless the game does something really different with it like uh you know slay the spire which takes a very card game approach to turn-based combat um i felt the same way about into the breach that's kind of a tactical rpg but it has some like board game elements um, and then Paper Mario, of course, has some fun action commands and the numbers are low. And, uh, you know, that is kind of what's important to note here is that, you know, the combat here, it, the jury's still out on whether I really like it. But I will say it is very well done. And I think fans of the genre will enjoy this. Um, now there are, like I mentioned before, sort of some action commands. Whenever you do an attack, there's a little slider, and depending on if you time your button press, your attack might do more damage, uh, which is cool. That kind of kept me invested in what was going on. Instead of just matching through the combat, I was trying to time it right. In some attacks, the, the bar goes crazy. It's really hard to time it. Um, and so that, that was fun. That kind of helped spice things up a little bit. And also, uh, some of the enemies do make you think. Um, I, I was kind of worried when I realized what type of, you know, turn-based combat this was, that it would just be kind of mindless and, you know, it's just hit attack, hit attack, he okay, heal up, now hit attack again. Uh, there was actually enemies that made me change my playstyle, which I really appreciated. Uh, there was one enemy who had, like, 999 defense. Uh, I assume that was intentional. Um, but it, I almost thought it was a glitch at first because, you know, I had a few glitches before that point, so I wasn't sure. Um, but uh, I was like, oh my gosh, how do I deal with this thing? Like, I, I can't deal any damage to it. And then I realized, oh, I have a, a poison move. And if you poison an enemy, it takes damage whenever it attacks. And uh, that made a big difference. I was able to take it down a lot easier. So I'm looking forward to seeing kind of how the gameplay scenarios get changed up. There's also a boss in this demo that uh, you have to take out its minions first in order to stun it. Oh, that's another thing. Um, all of the enemies in this game have stun meters, which is really fun. It makes you really want to, to get them to fill that stun damage because then they lose a turn. And I think damage is multiplied by two uh, if the enemy is stunned. That was another thing that kind of appealed to me. Um, I'm just not sure if this is going to be my favorite or not, uh, just because I don't really come for that RPG background. But I can really tell that a lot of thought went into it. I can tell that um, that the that Conrad and, and the other people helping him make this game, they did a really good job kind of crafting an RPG system that works, that's balanced, uh, but that still has room for experimentation, and uh, I think it will be very fun. So the last thing I wanted to talk about was the presentation, and uh, to me this was the biggest highlight of the whole game of playing through this demo, um, besides the fact that the characters remind me of Paper Mario. I would just say that everything in this game looks really slick, and like I know there's going to be some tweaks, I know the, the UI isn't you know what it's going to be in the finished product, but the way it looks right now, Honestly, it looks really solid. Uh, I think when I was playing it, you know, there were things that I was like, oh, this is, you know, still in development. Like, they, they, they might change some things. But, like, presentation-wise, I was like, I felt like I was playing a finished game. I think it looks quite pretty. The environment uh, looks great. Um, it's actually very detailed. Lots of grass everywhere. It's very pretty to look at. There's some some really cool shots of the sunset, and uh, you can sit on benches, which is really nice, and it, the camera kind of pans out so you can um, see the pretty lighting that this game has. Um, so what's already here is definitely very polished. And um, for the most part, my understanding is that uh, this is the majority of it is being developed just by Conrad. And uh, I, I think he has done an excellent job so far. I'm really looking forward to uh, what he produces. I love living in a time where video games can be developed by a single entity. Uh, Toby Fox and Eric Barone are really great examples of that, really successful examples. But 
Um, I just love that you can look up a number of indie games and find out just how small their team is, and yet they turn out such an amazing game with so much creativity that AAA developers wish they could produce. So uh, congrats to Congratical Games for making a very compelling game with such a small team. I am looking forward to seeing how it turns out. So, if this game appeals to you, if you're watching some of the footage, or if you've listened to this and you want to give the game a go or check it out, you can wishlist it now on Steam, which I'll include a link to in the description of this show. And uh, you can subscribe to their YouTube channel as well, because they post updates about the development of the game, which are quite fun to watch. Uh, It's really interesting to get inside, you know, get backstage access to a game developer as they're making a game. At least it's something I super enjoy. So uh, those are my thoughts on the Outbound Ghost. Really interested in this game. uh, Really interested in picking it up later this year. And I would love to hear what you think of it uh, once it comes out, I guess. So until then, thank you everyone for listening. I hope you have a wonderful week. And uh, I'll be back next week, probably flying solo yet again. So at least until then, I'm Jared. And I look forward to leveling with you next time. (laughs) 